I, 33, lost my husband in an accident, and he passed away shortly after he arrived at the hospital. We have two girls who are 9 and 5 and it's been very devastating and very difficult to be taking care of them while going through these tough times. My mom would help a lot and I'm so thankful for that. My in-laws have been keeping to themselves, but my brother-in-law would visit often to see the girls. He has always wanted kids on his own but hasn't been able to because his wife has medical issues. He treats my girls well and has been generous but treats me poorly and makes comments and criticizes my parenting often. He implied he wanted to be their guardian, but I told him no. He started demanding I bring the girls over to my in-law's house and would get upset when I tell him I have work. He'd claim I'm clearly not taking care of the girls and don't fit to be a single parent. We got into a huge argument after I told him I no longer will be welcoming him into my house because of his behavior and he the reported me to CPS after I refused to let him into my house. He claimed that I'm not taking good care of my girl's needs, refusing to let them see their grandparents, being busy with work and other things I don't know about. I had to deal with CPS once, then after they did a surprise visit, and thank goodness it went well, although I was told to deal with some issues that are normal in every family. I told my in-laws about what my brother-in-law did but didn't do anything. His wife was the one who told me eventually. It's been over a month now. My in-laws are calling to tell me that I should let my brother see the girls after I told them that only them see my girls. I refused to let him see the girls after what he did and the disrespect he's shown, but my in-laws are pressuring me saying these are their granddaughters and I have no right to act like this just out of spite. Not the idiot. The boy who cries wolf who implies he wants to be your kid's guardian, he has no rights to see your kids. CPS is there to protect children, not to waste time as his tool. See a lawyer. Have a plan for the next time they call CPS on you. If you want to see these grieving yet unsupportive in-laws, have a couple of witnesses with you. You might need them. Consider visits in a neutral setting. Your house is your house. Keep it safe. Not the idiot. It sounds like this guy is hoping CPS will deem you unfit and turn the kids over to him. He gets kids and a continuing bond with his brother. His family isn't doing anything because, well, they're his family and you're just the one who married him. I'd go entirely no contact for maybe three to six months. Certainly with brother-in-law, maybe with family. Just tell them you need this time to heal as a family. In a few months, limited contact at a local park or something. They don't come to your home. You don't go to theirs. See how it goes. Sounds like he wants to take your kids from you. My advice would be to have all your ducks in row. Keep your house clean and make sure there is nothing CPS could say anything about. There's a chance that if you stand your ground, which you should, that your other in-laws could turn against you, too. That might mean more bogus CPS calls. I also wouldn't leave your kids with their grandparents alone because you don't know if their uncle is coming to visit while they are there. So allow me to provide a little bit of backstory. When I was 18, my then girlfriend got pregnant with a baby girl, and we decided to name her after my grandmother, who had been excited to meet her first great-grandchild, but passed away before a few months before she was born. An important note to make here is that, although I was born and raised in Arizona, my dad is Mexican and my grandmother's name, well common in older Hispanic women, like, you definitely know somebody's grandma with that name common, it's widely fallen out of fashion more recently, and isn't that common in younger people are outside of Hispanic communities and communities with large Hispanic populations. Unfortunately, our baby girl was born premature and with a whole mess of health complications, and she only lived for three weeks. This was obviously devastating for both of us, and I commemorated her life with a tattoo of her name. My girlfriend and I parted ways shortly after, and I moved to England to go to university. This all happened 11 years ago, and I've lived in England ever since. So the current issue. I'm currently in a relationship of three years with a man I love very much. The first time I met his sister, she asked about my tattoo and what it meant, and I explained it all. She expressed her condolences and said it was a pretty name. In general I like his sister just fine, but she can be kinda a lot. Just sorta entitled and selfish sometimes. Anyway, she and her partner got a puppy at the start of lockdown. I'm not really on social media or anything and haven't seen her much, so I haven't heard much about the puppy. 
until earlier this week when I found out she gave it the same name as my daughter. I was confused because that name isn't common here and asked outright if she'd named it after my daughter. She said yes but was very, I don't know, flippant, I guess. Like, she was laughing and acting as if it was a cute little joke or something. I told her I didn't really feel comfortable with that and asked if she changed the dog's name. She pouted and said that isn't fair because she knows her name now and it'd be a pain to change it. I told her outright I feel like it's very disrespectful to my daughter's memory and I don't like that she didn't run it by me first. She kinda threw a tantrum and said I was being stupid, it's just a name and that I'm mean and rude for calling her disrespectful over this. I feel bad now, but I can't help the feeling of disrespect over this. Do I have any standing or am I overreacting? Here's the thing. You don't own the name. She doesn't have to ask your permission to name her dog. She can name her dog whatever she wants. Just like you don't have to ask for permission cut ties with her for her heartlessness. I'm not sure what kind of monster would listen to you share a very painful, meaningful story like that and decide that it didn't matter. Not the idiot. Personally I'd never speak to someone that cruel again. And if anyone asked why, I would definitely tell them the full story. If she happened to have had a pet with the same name as your child for a few years before even meeting you, it would have been an unfortunate painful coincidence. But the fact that she did this on purpose. That's horrible. She's more than a lot, she's an idiot, and you have every right to be angry and disgusted. Even if she changes it, I would hold her at several arm's lengths, as this says very unfortunate things about her character. Does your boyfriend see how inappropriate this was? Your partner needs to step in here. This is insanely disrespectful, especially since it's not a common name and a coincidence, she outright admitted it. My husband's brother did something similar, he named a cat after my dad that died very suddenly when I was a teenager. My dad was Icelandic and had a very unique but a very cool Norse mythology sounding name. My husband put his foot down, his brother wouldn't budge and continued to post about the damn cat on social media, even creating a hashtag with the name. They're not close anymore. My first husband and I got married when we were both 22 years old. He was my high school sweetheart, we were both fresh out of college and in love. We have a daughter a year after when we were 23. She's 15 years old now. Seven years ago when my daughter was 8 years old my husband passed away in a car accident. We were both so devastated. He was a wonderful husband and father and I still miss him terribly until this moment. Two years after that I met this wonderful gentleman at church and got married six months after. He was a widow in his early 40 and never had a child. Him and his first wife tried for many years but was never blessed with one. His first wife passed away five years prior to us meeting each other due to cancer. Being a working single mom was too tough and I was incredibly lonely. And I kinda know him around the church for years just never got close or anything. It's been almost five years of us being together and it has been wonderful. Him and my daughter are super close. Maybe because it was due to the fact that he has always wanted kids, but he is really good and close with her. He spoils her to death in a good way and be a very good father figure to her. Three years ago we were also blessed with having another daughter. My husband doesn't play favor between his two girls and I can tell that he loves them equally. For the past couple of months my daughter has been showing me heartwarming videos of kids asking their stepdad to adopt them. And I was like cool. But for the past month she has been quite persistent asking my permission to allow my husband to adopt her. She wants to change her last name to be his last name. I said if your dad were here he'd be completely devastated. And I honestly couldn't do that to him even though he's not around anymore. My daughter said then why did I change my name? And it was hard for me to explain. And I don't even know how to do the whole adoption thing because I really don't want her to do it. I'm just putting my shoes if I was dead and my husband remarries. I would want them to be close to the new wife, but I want my legacy still. And honestly my first husband was a great dad and it's not his fault that he can't be around. So, am I the idiot for discouraging my daughter to be adopted by my husband? For all intents and purposes, your husband is her father. And she's now the only person in the house with a different last name. That likely seems weird to her and could be making her feel less than. It sounds like you're the one hanging on to your first husband vicariously through your daughter and that's not really fair to her or your husband. 
I'm reluctant to judge, but you are the idiot for discouraging your daughter from feeling more a part of the family unit. You are the idiot. I say this purely because to your daughter, you are insinuating that she cannot still have a special place for her father if she's adopted by her stepfather. It is hypocritical of you as well. I understand that you're coming from a good place, but this isn't right. Are you going to tell her she can't change her name when she gets married too? Also, you can be adopted without changing your name, but it should be her choice either way, because it's her name. I expect that you have hurt her deeply by your reaction to something that was so important to her. Your daughter is trying to cope with a terrible loss and this is something that she's found that would make her happy. I think, assuming your new husband feels the same way as she does, you should drop your objections to it and let her take this step that will help her in the process of grieving and moving on there's plenty of love to go around. The love and relationship that she has with her stepfather doesn't wipe away your husband's legacy or in any way diminish the bond that she had with him. Some background. I, 32, met my late wife when we were 17. We dated all through college and moved in together and got married after graduation. Two years later, she got pregnant and we were anxiously waiting the birth of our daughter. However, it was a rough pregnancy, and she passed away while giving birth to our daughter, Seven. I won't lie, it was a horrific time in my life. I was struggling with losing my first love unexpectedly and learning how to parent a newborn. I relied heavily on my family for support, and after a couple of years I pulled myself up by my bootstraps for my daughter and got our lives together. Around this time, I met my current soon-to-be ex-wife, 30. She was the first woman who caught my eye after so long grieving, and we fell in love. I admit I became a little too rash after seeing how good she was with my daughter, and we got married after about a year of dating. Flash forwards to now. She's cheating. I found out about it through one of her coworkers who thought I should know. I'm devastated. I filed for divorce, but because of current world events we are still living together and forced to interact. Because of this, we have spent a lot of time talking about how to split things up, not always amicably. She wants 50-50 custody of my daughter. I said hell no. To be clear, my daughter is 100% aware that her bio mom died in childbirth and that stepmom is not a bio mom. She calls her stepmom by her first name, that is how I introduced her. I do not plan to fully cut them off. My soon-to-be ex is the only mother figure my daughter has known, and I will fully support them having contact and keeping up with their weekly Saturday movie nights. I just don't want to split custody 50-50. My daughter is mine, and she will stay with me full-time. However my soon-to-be ex is calling me selfish and horrible and saying that my daughter is hers as well, and it's cruel to not allow for an even split. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot, cheating and hurt feelings aside, this woman has been in your daughter's life for two years and is not biologically related her. While two years may feel long for a child, it is not long in the scheme of things. Even though she probably doesn't want things completely uprooted, I would be really skeptical about whether she wanted to remain your daughter's primary mother figure for the next 11, will she when she meets someone new? Will she commit to staying in the same city? Splitting her college tuition. I think it's better for your daughter if you don't cut her off completely, but I really don't think 50% custody is appropriate from any perspective. Your daughter is your daughter, not hers. I think it's more than reasonable to let her continue to have contact, but if your soon-to-be ex-wife wanted legal rights to your daughter there are avenues she could have taken. She should have known that one of the consequences to the actions that led to your divorce would be that she would lose a legal relationship to your daughter. You have every right to maintain full custody, and you're being more than generous allowing your daughter to continue to have a relationship with your soon-to-be ex-wife. While I'm sure she might have formed a relationship with your daughter, she is not entitled to one based on the fact that it's your daughter. She should have considered this when she cheated that it not only affected her relationship with you, but also your daughter. If you felt like being benevolent, which you might not right now, then you could allow her select visitation, but you're under absolutely no obligation to keep her in your daughter's life. My 10, just turned 11, year old son has a friend who's left out of a lot of activities. Not for lack of invitations, his parents would just decline. I didn't know why until recently, figured it wasn't really my business. My son was having a sleepover and wanted to invite the kid. I figured no reason not to invite him, so even if he didn't go, he'd know he was welcome. 
My son was with him after school and asked if he wanted to come, and he said definitely, and he was free. He told me his friend could make it, so I emailed her and said the boys talked and sent the info about the sleepover. She responded and said she was really upset my son had approached her son about it, instead of me writing to her, before calling it to her son's attention. I apologized and said I understood if her son couldn't go. She said now that her son knew about it, she had no choice but to let him go or he'd be crushed, but I needed to help manage his condition. I figured that meant supervising his taking some medication or not letting things get too loud or whatever. She said he was extremely routine-oriented and needed routine to thrive and stay on course, so I had to go by his routine and that she noticed the invite said 3 o'clock, but he couldn't start the sleepover until 5.30. I said that was fine, taking it to mean he wouldn't be over until 5.30. She drops him off and is irate to find we'd already started and everyone else was there. She told me she was upset I had already not adhered to the schedule and I explained the miscommunication. She said to avoid further miscommunication she brought his schedule along. It was very precise. 6 o'clock 7.05, dinner time. 7.06 8.29, quiet indoor play. 8.30 8.44, brush teeth, etc. To her credit, she had written in suggestions of where the birthday activities could fit, for example, she wrote her present opening next to quiet indoor play. I took one look at the list and explained the party wasn't really running on a set schedule, the boys were just hanging out. She became very flustered and said if that was the case her son would become overwhelmed and she'd have to take him home and he'd be devastated. I apologized but said I definitely couldn't guarantee adherence to this schedule so didn't want to assume responsibility for her son if it was of critical importance. Unsurprisingly, her son was very very sad to have to leave. I suggested to the mom that he join the boys in the yard where they were playing basketball, but she said it wasn't time for basketball right then. So he ended up leaving and I feel bad because he was so upset. I keep thinking back and wondering if I should have just not invited him and saved everyone all this trouble. Not the idiot. I would see if the boy could come over for a sleepover just him and your son, let her know you will follow her schedule and try to a close as possible, explain to your son before that you will be going off the schedule that his mother has given to you, even if it sounds completely crazy. This will hopefully give the boy a sense of a normal friendship and hopefully she will start taking him to parties and letting him join his friends. I'm a scout leader and every now and then we have a kid with some kind of special needs and the parents will come along to our activities, trips and hikes to aid us with their kids' needs. So even though the kid would be a little different than the others for having mom or dad tagging along, at least they get to participate like the other children. It's so important for kids to socialize and feel like they belong and it's every parent's job to make that happen. You made every reasonable attempt to accommodate this kid. I was also a very schedule-oriented child and could have sudden breakdowns when things changed or didn't go according to plan. Only as an adult and after my sister's diagnosis did I realize that it was probably an ADHD symptom. However, with forewarning, like an invitation to a party, schedule changes were no problem and I would get caught up in enjoying myself anyway. Feel like this mom probably had a doctor or therapist suggest sticking to a schedule and she took it a step too far.